in this sea of silver and maroon that is Montana football. There is a little bit of Tennessee. It's the time of year that's rivaled by maybe just Christmas in the South. NASCAR wants these drivers to be successful. That's why they started their Drive for Diversity program. He makes a trip south to Georgia after seven years at East Ridge. The Atlanta Motor Speedway has a reputation of being a fast track with few cautions and drama at the end. Earlier this week, I asked which games people were going to. The most popular answer, East Hamilton at Signal Mountain. To call what Sal LaRocca has amassed over the years a collection would be an understatement. LaRocca has more like a Dodger museum. Eye-popping one-of-a-kind pieces you're really going to have to see to believe. The earliest ticket for a Brooklyn baseball game. This is from 1883. One step into Sal LaRocca's basement and you realize this is not a basement. This is an original, authentic Jackie Robinson doll from around 1950. It's a Dodger Town Museum. These are the, the transfers of stock, and this is a certificate. 190 shares issued to Dodgers president and GM Charles Eben in 1899. It was found in the trash when they tore down the old Ebbets Field in 1960. And every one of the thousands of pieces in LaRocca's collection has a story. Zach Weed is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was quite a player. He wrote to his girlfriend at the time who was eventually became his wife. It's kind of hard to make out, but while sidelined with a broken leg some 98 years ago, Zach Wheat wrote this letter to his girlfriend about the sinking of the Titanic. This is um, just a, a, I think it's a Juan Samuel bat. It's signed by the whole, I think, 88 ball club. There are names you know. This is uh, Colfax's uniform from 1957. And one of a kind so pieces from people you've probably never heard of. The uh, Brooklyn Dodgers had a double A farm team, just like the lookouts have now, in the Texas League. Whatever young man that came through the uh, organization that played at Fort Worth, they were approached by the Nakona Company to get them to uh, authorize the company to use their name on baseball gloves. A collection now, that grew instance, from a love of baseball this is and a kid from Brooklyn who just loved going to the games. That's me with the dark outfit, and that's my friend Anthony right there. Do you remember what the first thing is that you got? Did I have a board? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you, I collected as a boy, mm -hmm. so I have my yearbooks from when I was... 12, 11, here, come in. We're not finished. I got another room. Now, you may have seen some small tags on some of the stuff in the story. LaRocca and a friend went through and took inventory and tagged his entire collection a few years ago. That being said, LaRocca tells me he still doesn't know just how many Dodger pieces he has. If you'd like to see more of his collection, and there is a lot more, head to our website, newschannel9.com. You think Vanderbilt University sports, you think great baseball team, great golfers, pretty good basketball teams, right? But I bet you never thought Vanderbilt and NASCAR. That is before Travis Geisler. Travis Geisler's dream started with a love of racing. To have the experience growing up racing, my dad still races three nights a week at a local level. To grow up doing that, it kind of gets into your blood. And then a chance at the big time. I've run 13 nationwide races in my career as a driver. But when sponsorship money began to dry up in 2005, Geisler went from turning laps to turning wrenches at Penske Racing. And at the end of the 2008 season, he was tapped to be the crew chief of the number 77 car driven by Sam Warners Jr. We've got a lot of young guys on our team, myself included, Sam, everybody, and we just need a little bit of time to gel, and I think we're starting to see that. A degree from Vanderbilt University in mechanical engineering has helped Geisler understand the big thundering stock cars in ways others in the garage area do not. I can kind of understand more of the specifics of what goes on here. And his experience on the track is helping his driver, Sam Hornish Jr., understand the difference between Indy cars and NASCAR. Travis has a lot of the same experiences with running a lot of these tracks that I've ran. As he's transitioning from IRL to, to NASCAR world and how he speaks, I think I might be able to help that along. While Geisler has the advantage of being both a former driver and an engineer, he has the disadvantage of being one of the youngest crew chiefs in the garage area. There's that little bit of learning and getting to the point where you know you feel comfortable making those decisions and uh, you know seeing how he's matured as a crew chief uh, has been great. So far, the results have been mixed for Geisler and the number 77 team. They are currently 29th in the point standings. 
Butler and West Virginia punched their ticket to the Final Four on Saturday, and today the Tennessee Vols were hoping to do the same. Tennessee making history by playing in its first ever Elite Eight game this afternoon. This game was wild, so let's just jump to the second half when things really started to pick up. Corey Lucius missed the corner three. J.P. Prince gets the big slam all alone. Falls up 45 to 40, but Prince would pick up his third personal foul soon after. And Jarrell Summers hits a long two and the foul. Spartans go on an 8-1 run with Prince out. Vols answer when they put Prince back in, inside to Brian Williams for the jump hook. Vols go on an 11-2 run after Prince comes back into the game. Under three minutes left, game tied at 66, Summers hits long three. He led the Spartans with 21 points. Tennessee down now one. Lucius misses the front end of the one and one Tennessee gets the rebound at the other end. Scotty Hobson goes in for the jumper, but is fouled by Draymond Green. Hobson at the line for two, makes the first free throw to tie the game at 69. Hobson, though, misses the second free toss. Michigan State back the other way. For the win, Ramar Morgan is all alone inside. He gets hammered by J.C. Prince. Morgan then with the line with two shots, 1.8 seconds. Morgan makes the first free throw. Would miss the second to 1.6 seconds and falls with one last chance. But Prince's shot is no good. Michigan State wins 70 to 69. Well, there's nothing uh, I could say that's going to uh, make anybody from Tennessee feel any better. Um, we did. Uh, we came to this uh, regional to win it and get to the Final Four. Um, Michigan State played uh, very well, um, and uh, and obviously, uh, you know, made made enough plays to win the game. Nolan Smith scored 29 points, and Duke returned to the Final Four for the first time in six years by beating Baylor 78 to 71 in the South Regional Final. The Blue Devils are the only number one seed to advance to Indianapolis. The University of Iowa has a new head coach, and he's a familiar name to fans of the Southern Conference. The Hawkeyes have convinced Fran McCaffrey to leave Siena and head to Ames. McCaffrey led the Saints to three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. Now, prior to coaching at Siena, McCaffrey spent six seasons at the University of North Carolina Greensboro, where his team knocked off Chattanooga in dramatic fashion to advance to the NCAA in 2001. Rain was the big winner today in Martinsville. The race is postponed until tomorrow at noon. But the big news out of the state of Virginia this weekend, Denny Hammond will have knee surgery this week. Hammond was a preseason media favorite to give Jimmy Johnson a run for the championship, but he currently sits 19th in the points. You know, we were going to wait to the end of the season, but, you know, just decided it, it wasn't a good idea. Uh, we were doing, you know, it's, we were doing some further damage to the knee, and to me it wasn't, it's not something that's worth, you know, suffering forever and having a permanent limp or anything like that for it. NASCAR is off next weekend for the Easter holiday, and Hamlin plans to be back in the car in Phoenix. Joe Gibbs Racing has contracted the services of veteran driver Casey Mears to be on standby as a relief driver, just in case. If you want to get all the latest NASCAR news, be sure to visit the Bad Street Fog on NewsChannel9.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The Chattanooga Lady Mock Softball team has a new strikeout queen. On Saturday, senior Brooke Loudermilk broke at the strikeout record with eight Ks in a game. And UTC continued its hot start in the Southern Conference, taking the doubleheader from Sanford. Bloody Box wrapping up the weekend series in Birmingham this afternoon, and they won easily 2-1. to one. Nikki Waters pitched six strong innings, giving up just one run and striking out five. Della Harrison, uh, she had a pretty good day's work. She had one at-bat, four RBI. In case you're uh, counting at home, Tanya, that means she had a grand slam. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, pretty effective at-bat for yeah, sure. Yeah, looked like a good game. Uh -huh. All right, Heather, thank you.